Our speaker is Emmanuel Umubajesu. The title of this message is My Conversation with Satan. All power in heaven and on earth belongs to Jesus. Jesus power, super power, Jesus power, super power, Oboni power, powerless power, witchcraft power, powerless power, Satan's power, powerless power, Satan's power, powerless power, Jesus power, super power, Jesus power, super power. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, Amen, blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen, 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 blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We love you, Lord Jesus, for your kindness, your love, your desire to help those that are being tormented, your desire to liberate those souls that are yet under the bondage of Satan. And I thank you for saving my soul. And I thank you for the grace given me to be able to give out this message today to help your people. The Bible says you send your word unto your people. You heal them from their sicknesses and you deliver them from their destructions. And so, Lord, I want this word, this message, to be a deliverance and healing ointment into the bodies, into the souls, into the spirits of the hearers. And I give you the glory for it, Lord. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What we're discussing today is titled... My conversation with Satan. And if I have to share this chapter of my life with you without telling you how I come about Satan, the whole thing may be entirely meaningless. So let's examine very quickly uh, how I came about Satan. In my journey of life, uh, I pursue quite a number of things, and uh, in the midst of those things, I came across a magician who is popularly known in Nigeria as Bambolambola. He is very vast in the art of sacred magic and uh, ceremonial magic. He was very vast. So he, he took me as his apprentice, or as a student, and he began to teach me all those things. So as a master, one night he called me and said, I want to cook you properly, which means that he wants to make me a very powerful man in the dark world. And he said, therefore, you should start fasting, keeping strictly to the following three instructions. One, that you must not eat whenever there is the sun in the sky. That is until after 9 o'clock in the night when there will be no sun again. Because back home in Nigeria we have at least 11 hours of sunshine during the dry season. Two, you must not sleep during the afternoon period. Three, 
you must not have sexual intercourse during the period of this fasting. And finally he said, and you fast for six consecutive months, taking your meal once each day. Reluctantly, I agreed to all these conditions and so started the fasting, even though it was a difficult thing for me to do. There I learned the lesson of a self-denial. It's a pity and it's a shame today that a lot of believers, they want to follow Christ, but they cannot deny themselves. And I tell you, if you cannot deny yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. Because without discipline, there will be no discipleship. And if you want to be a disciple of Christ Jesus, you've got to be disciplined. Discipline in your prayer life. Discipline in your devotional life. Discipline in your Christian life. You've got to be disciplined. Well, reluctantly I agreed to all those conditions and so I started the fasting. But my mouth cannot fully explain what happened to me during these first six months of my fasting. In the third month, I remember, uh, during the fasting, I fell asleep one of, the, uh, one of the days in the afternoon. Though my master was not at home, and without telling him, when he came in, he knew I had slept. That's how God knew that you miss it anytime you missed it. God know that you miss it. And uh, he strictly told me that all my three months fast was, wa was a waste because I had broken a rule by sleeping. And I began to wonder in my mind who told him I had slept because he wasn't home, he traveled. And as he was just walking in and I was welcoming him was when he told me that I, have, I had broken a rule. He asked me to start all over. Yet another six months of fasting adding that there was no mercy at all in our business. I either do it or leave it. And that's what Christianity should be to us. There's no, no reason for us whatsoever playing games with God. You just have to do it or you leave it. So therefore I started the fasting again because I want to do it. I want to be strong. I need that power. I need it very badly. When it was the third month again, my master called me one of the days and said to me that, he would take me to a place which I later on realized to be a cemetery. And this was uh, at night. And this was the first time that I ever experienced what magicians call invocation. Invocation is the process by which unseen spirits are made visible. And um, we were in there, and my experience there was a very bad one. But I, will, I, I don't want to recount, recount it in this uh, message because I have a lot to share with you about my conversation with Satan. Then I've got to tell you uh, the kinds of magic we have and those ones that actually pointed out there to Satan and his activities. There are four types of uh, magic, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, the black magic the white magic, the sacred magic, the kwabala magic. And within the sacred magic is where you have ceremonial magic, okay? Well, black magic is operated by phantom spirits known in Yoruba language in Nigeria as Inwi. Phantoms are known as Inwi. By means of leaves, roots, and incantations, that's how black magic is operated. White magic is believed to be operated by means of inner power, uh, psychic move, uh, self-development, studies of the nature, uh, and so on and so forth. For instance, the Amok. The sacred magic is operated by guardian angels of the devil, the serving spirits of the devil, among which there are uh, uh, the spirit of witchcraft, some familiar spirits, and the sub-princes of the dark and the superior spirits of the darkness. Those are the forces that operate uh, sacred magic. But the Kwabala magic is the combination of the whole systems plus some few extra things that you've got to do. But what does the Bible say? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What I'm saying here is, the reason why you want to dumble into all these things, why you want to get into them, is because you want to know more. You want wisdom. And so, uh, Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10 told us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you fear God and you allow the Spirit of God to rule supreme in your life, that is the beginning of wisdom. Then I've got to share with you also the government of Satan. The reason why I'm doing this because uh, in the previous chapter, 
I've told you a little bit about all of these things, but I just want you to know how I get to come to the extent of having a conversation with Satan, a face-to-face -face conversation. Now, let's talk a little bit about the government of Satan. The purpose of this uh, section is to let you know that there is devil and that he is a sinner for whom God Almighty has provided, provided a lake of fire and also for everyone that follows him. But I want to deliberate on the many deceivers in this world or many people who use the names of uh, angels as a cover to do evils. In the Bible, God's eternal testament, Paul wrote, in the epist that is in the epistle of Colossians, the second chapter, verses 18 and 19, and uh, Paul told us that uh, let no man deceive you, let no man beguile you, or disqualify you of your reward uh, with voluntary humility, insisting on those things, self-abasement and worship of angels, taking his stands on visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments that grow with the growth of God. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit further about this government of Satan. In my experience in the darkness of this world, when I was learning magic, and after my graduation, I realized that the devil put his government as a counterfeit of the kingdom of God. He has his own trinity. I told you previously, unholy trinity. There are four in them, and in, in the group. So we may as well call the arrangement of Satan's government a quadruplicate uh, government, or a quadrunity. The person of the devil as magic presented him is quite different from the way the Bible exposed him. And we must not forget that the Bible is God's inspired words of truth. And that Satan, who himself is the author of magic, is a liar and the father of lies. You remember what Jesus told us in John chapter 8, verse 44? The Bible confirms to us that it is Lucifer, the son of the morning, who is a devil, but magic does not admit Magicians say that when God caused Lucifer, the curse of God hit Lucifer and caused another spirit entirely to evolve from him, from within him. And it is this spirit they refer to as Satan. They claim that Satan is not the same as Beelzebub, but in the Bible, the inspired word of God, the only authority, the Jews maintain that Beelzebub, who is Satan, is the head of all demonic spirits. If you can turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 12 and verse uh, 24. So, this is the satanic order as magic presented it. The government of the devil has three divisions, which are the superior spirits, the sub-princes, and the servant spirits. The servant spirits include the familiar spirits, which Yoruba people in Yoruba language called Emere, that's in Nigeria, and the phantoms, Inwe, and so on and so forth. All these ministers of the devil have their own duties in their offices, and they face it thoroughly. The four superior spirits are Lucifer, Leviathan, Satan, and Billiard. The sub-princes are only eight in number, and they are Ashtaroth, Magod, Belzebub, Asmodi, Oriens, Paimon, Eretin, and Emimon. These eight sub-princes have under their control over 5,000 directly under their control, but millions upon millions of seven spirits are under their control. Among the seven spirits are Sashiel, Aniel, Eliazar, Zamael, Archangel Michael, Michael of the Planets, Archangel Haniel, also they have Cassiel, uh, Kamael, Zafquel, Raphael, Zadikuel, Gabriel, and Gabriel of the Planet, and Archangel Gabriel, and Uriel. All these are archangels of the devil, most of them there. These evil spirits seek to, to control the mind of man to control the mind of a man in his thinking. They invade the thought of a man by suggestion. And I tell you, my fellow brethren, suggestion is the worst, I repeat that again, suggestion is the worst instrument, the worst weapon in the hand of the devil to use against anybody, to destroy them. Suggestion. And the suggestion will come into your mind, but... I will tell you that at the first instance of suggestion into your mind, if you resist it, if you resist that first knock, you will discover that you have victory over the forces of darkness.
But if you do not resist him, then you find yourself in big, big, big trouble. Now, let us talk a little bit about satanic markets. The evil spirits have four types of markets, to the best of my knowledge. The first one is in the graveyard, which they refer to, that is magicians, they call it by magic word, Talata Jae. The second one is on the water, and it's called pentagrammaton. This has nothing to do with the mighty word tetragrammaton. This is, this is something different entirely, pentagrammaton. The third one is in the wilderness, and it's called Shedim, Shedim market. While the fourth one is in the sky, in the firmament, where witches and wizards can be found, the market is named after Lucifer. This Lucifer market is the most terrible and dangerous market out of the whole four. The pentagrammaton spirits are responsible for ship accidents on the water. If the ship cross their market spot, they turn it over. And then you can, the, the science, the, the natural science can explain it as a, a flood or, 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 or whatever, a storm or some big fish or something. That's, that would be the explanation. But they've not been able to explain some of, some of the ships that has no storm problem or anything, but they begin to sink. Anyway, I don't want to go too much into that. Before you can be allowed into these markets, you must possess witchcraft or wizard spirit, or you may be the leader of a native cult, which in Yoruba language is called Oluwo. It's a kind of shift and see in the occult world in Nigeria. Oluwo. You could also be a chronic magician or a professor in magic. If a witch wants to go to this kind of market, she will sleep at home and the evil spirit in her will go out with her spirit into the market. That is, the body. The, 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 the body of such a, a person will remain behind, lying down in the room, but the human spirit will have gone away along with the witchcraft spirit that possessed her. If her own spirit does not return, however, that will be the end of such a person's life. A magician can go in like manner as does the witch. He can also go physically if he will, but with a special magical uh, regalia prepared for such a purpose. So also can the Oluwo, among these Oluwos are the uh, witch doctors, the herbalists, which Yoruba called Babalawo in Yoruba. Uh, and uh, there is a difference between Oluwo and Babalawo, okay? But time is short here for us to be recounting uh, the difference between Oluwo and Babalawo. Now, what do the witches and wizards go there to do? What do they go to this market to do? They go there to sell. While the magicians, the Oluwos, and the witch doctors, they go there to buy. What do they sell? They, they go there to sell different kind of things. But in particular, there is something they call Imioshumare in Yoruba language. In the Yoruba language, Oshumare means rainbow, while Imi means drop. Either bird drop or human drop or something or stool or refuse, human refuse. So that combined word means the stool or the drop of the rainbow. Many people will think that it is the boa which vomits rainbow that can make such a stool, but no, not at all. It is a spirit, uh, the, the spirit of witchcraft in the witch, which the cults call agude or agude or agude gude. There is a difference between these three uh, titles that I just uh, pronounced out, agude, agude, and the agude gude. The agudes are the lesser witches. The agude are the middle range. The Agude Gude are the superior witches in the higher order. This board inside of the witches usually makes this kind of a stool once in every three months. And it is that, it, it is that stool that is called Imioshimari, the stool of the rainbow, which means they, they, they have a kind of a word play to, to, to give a, a different baptism, to change the identity of what they are trying to deal with. Now, this part of my life experience is rather too long. 
and I cannot explain every fact I know about the demonic world and the satanic markets and their operations in this uh, kind of a short time of message, okay? So bear with me. But if you invite me to your church or fellowship, I'll be glad to tell you more about, about, about that. Now, let's go into the business. My conversation with Satan. Many people will begin to wonder how possible will somebody uh, have a face-to-face -face conversation with Satan. How possible is it? What makes it possible? What kind of a person should that type of a man be? I mean, different kind of questions may be raised. Some will, say, will raise a question in their minds. What does Satan look like? Is it green? Is it yellow? Is it black? Is it, is it red? Uh, what kind of... Is it, does it have an animal nature or human nature or, or wood nature? Well, my fellow brethren... I don't think what he looked like in appearance has any bearing. What is more important is what is his aim? What has he got to do with you? Destruction of your soul, that is it. He wants to destroy you. So, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to be able to experience what I have experienced so as to be able to expose Satan so that no human being, after hearing from me, will ever fall into Satan's trap anymore, unless he willingly want to. My conversation with Satan. A convention of the evil government was held in Nigeria, in the former western region of Nigeria, sometimes in 1952, latter part of it. I was very young, a small lad as I was, but I had been initiated into this evil thing, and I just find it difficult to get out of it, even if I want to. When the evil spirits are holding this kind of uh, convention, they will go into various divisions. They go into various divisions, with each division having a, a leadership. But for a discussion which will bring all divisions together under one tent, Lucifer, the son of the morning, will share on such an occasion. If there were various discussions, there would also be various masters. In the meeting of that day, Satan, being a captain, was the leader, while some spirits like Belzebu, Basmodi, Eritin, Bubana, Semlin, Nojin stood around him as the security officers, because they really dressed up like an army. To start the meeting, Satan roared and greeted in occultic language, Modi Kalustra Oyogi, meaning, Hello, all you members of the cults. And we answered accordingly. Then, Satan asked us, What do you think we can do to those who give themselves to purity and prayer? Immediately, Beelzebub stood up to say something. He was, however, interrupted by a man amidst us who asked, Is it those people calling Jesus, Jesus? To this question, Satan roared angrily and said painfully to the man, Why did you arrow me? If you venture call that name again, I will deal ruthlessly with you. He therefore advised members to call Jesus that righteous man. My beloved brethren, a most fearful thing happened immediately that man mentioned the name Jesus. There was a very bright light amidst our darkness in which the meeting was taking place. The light also, I mean, was so large that the meeting was unable to proceed any further. This is one of the reasons why the witches and sorcerers hate any zealous and prayerful Christian. However, the way this meeting ended so abruptly brought so many searching questions to my mind as to the invisibility of the power of Satan, because I used to believe that Satan has power. The matter kept me restless, so I determined to know that name or the man that was called Jesus. I also determined to evoke Satan and know from him, hearing from, from the horse's very mouth, why he did not like to hear the name of Jesus. I made all the necessary preparations that must be done before Satan could be invoked. 
If anybody wants to see Satan face to face, to the best of my knowledge, in, in magic occultism, such a person must uh, need a lot, a lot, a lot of consecration, a lot of preparations, a lot of sacrifices, and a lot of self-denial. For instance, such a person must fast for at least 11 months and 11 days consecutively, taking his food once in a day. But there are still some taboos, do's and don'ts within these 11 months and 11 days. During this period of fasting, you must neither sleep nor doze off or daisy in the afternoon period. You must not be involved in sexual intercourse as well. On the completion of the fasting, then the invocation can take place within a specially prepared area with the orations for such a purpose that you have been doing for the past 11 months and 11 days. It, you must concentrate on one particular place. And that is where the rituals, every kind of necessary rituals, must take place. I did all that was necessary to evoke Satan, and I evoked him. To begin with, I told Satan to answer all my questions frankly. Then he said to me, Bag of Wickedness, that was my name in those days, that was my alias, alias Bag of Wickedness. He said, Bag of Wickedness, please leave that topic aside. For I know what you intend to ask. When I ask him back, what do you know? When I have not even asked you any question. Then he replied to me, you can speak on. Now, the, then a dialogue ensued between me and Satan on that day. Then I asked Satan a question. I said, Captain, why was it that on that day, you remember, getting to more than a year now, in the convention, you remember, you passed an instruction that no one should mention the name of Jesus. Then he roared. Why did you arrow me and said you wanted to speak to me? Then I answered him, Captain, did you see me with any bow and arrow? Then he said to me, in a very cool but angry voice, he said, there is no arrow in your hand, but there is an arrow in that name you called. I have told you not to call that name again, but to refer to him as that righteous man. Call him that righteous man. Then I, res I responded, why is it, Captain, that I must not call the name of Jesus in your presence? <laughs> Was his response. Then when he shouted and like he was bruised, he disappeared. I couldn't see him no more. Then I started to make some kind of forceful invocation to compel him to appear, to reappear. Immediately he reappeared, but this time in annoyance and his face was so wild. Like he, he, he would have consumed me if he has got the power to do so. But I have so much around me that may not uh, allow him to come closer. However, we started to discuss again. Then I asked him another question. Why did you run away because I called the name of that righteous man? Then he talked and I was shaken. He said, you know, you are inconveniencing me by mentioning that name, the name of that righteous man. You know why? In the beginning, God created us in his form and likeness. We were made from the brimstone of hellfire. While in creating the world, he made human beings from the earth. So, and you know that the stone is, is, a, is of a better quality than just the mud. Then, God said that man should reign over all he had created, for which I am one. You know, uh, when, when you say the clay should reign over the stone, you know, you are coming about some trouble there. This really annoyed me. So says, uh, said uh, Satan, said this really annoyed him. Said this really annoyed him. We decided to summon a meeting of our own to counter God's plan. The members of the Supreme Council 
of, uh, of our government are Lucifer, Leviathan, Satan, others are Belial, Belzebub, Astaroth, Margot, Asmodi, Oriens, Paimon, Emaimon, Eritin, Cassiel, Zephquel, Gabriel, Amiel, Michael, and Raphael. Our topic of deliberation was, what shall we do to make man the enemy of God? After Lucifer asked this question, there was silence for about five minutes. Soon afterwards, Beelzebub, the centurion of the hypocrites, stood up and said, One way which we can follow is to make man sin against God. We know that God hates sin, therefore if God sees sin in man, he will reject him, and thus man will become an enemy of God. This was agreed upon unanimously, but Eritin asked the question, How shall we do that? How can we succeed to make man an enemy of God? Lucifer answered and said, I will use the skin of Leviathan, that is the skin of the serpent, because the snake is a friend of human being. Therefore, if I use the skin of the serpent, they will not recognize me. By doing this, I will give them the fruit of spiritual poison. That is the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, according to the Bible reference, which God ordered them not to eat. I will make them eat it. By that, man also will become a rebel as we are. They will become sinners. Then God will kindle his annoyance against them. And the evil spirits were very happy when they hear the plan for human destruction. When Lucifer successfully executed the plan, we were all very happy. Therefore, God Almighty drove man away from the Garden of Eden. Now, my fellow brethren, from the account of uh, Satan here, I observe quite a number of things. It was true, we read it in the book of Isaiah, concerning Leviathan, who was a piercing serpent, a serpent that flies. You know, there's something very significant here that I want us to learn from this uh, experience. Satan, all the forces of the devil, realize that the easiest way to catch a person is through his friend, through somebody that he loves. That's the best way to catch. And Satan will now come in subtly, cunningly, to put a kind of arrest upon any individual. But the Bible told us in 52, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Because when Satan was thinking of all these things, he never realized that God will have an alternative plan if the first one will fail. So therefore, I'm encouraging you Christians, as you are listening now, be very careful. Be very, very careful. Extremely careful. Listen, you can never be too careful with Satan. Okay? You can never be too careful with Satan. And for you to be careful enough, you need to live the life of holiness, a holy life. And how do you live a holy life? There is nothing that is called holiness without obedience to the Word of God. And that's why I have that message in one of my tapes. Obedience is the essence of holiness. Obedience is the essence of holiness. So, if you want to be holy, you need to obey God. Anyway, to continue with my conversation with Satan... I threw another question to, to Satan, and I said, Captain, why is it that it is only sin you can use or you, you, you know to use for human destruction? Then Satan responded by saying, the reason is this, and it is simple. We have lived with God Almighty, and we know what he hates and what he likes. We have tasted the joy of his kingdom, 
And since he has driven us away, we wouldn't want anybody to inherit what we have lost. Okay? Listen, bag of wickedness. Immediately we made men to sin against God. God did what we never expected at all. He prophesied about the eventual destruction of our government when he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise thy head, you will bruise his heels. Now referring to Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. After this prophecy we were all sad, for we know what it means. However, Lucifer appealed for calm and said, What type of son do you think man will beget that will be able to conquer us? Don't be afraid. Don't tremble. If any son of man should go against our will, he or she will surely die. And once he's dead, everything is done. Okay? So none of you should be afraid at all. But we did not know that the seed of the woman will turn out to be mysterious. Then I throw another question. How many sons did God promise men? And what was the sign you were expecting to see? before you know that your kingdom has been destroyed. Then Satan answered, The seed of the woman that God promised is one, and he is the one who will face the, uh, the go our government and destroy it, according to God's prediction. Then I throw another question to Satan. What type of war did you wage against each other? Did you fight with guns or with bullets or with what? Then Satan responded, The war was not that of guns, bombs, or cutlass, but it was a war of blood. God wanted the righteous blood to cleanse the sinners. And since all the sins that God has been raising up has been coming in, we've been trying whatever we can to have our own share of those sins. You know, brethren, I, I just want us to uh, learn a little bit from here. When God is calling you, God is calling you to come to him just as you are. Nothing more, nothing less. Just as you are. And as you come to God just as you are, God wants you to give the whole of what you are, the whole of who you are, to God. But Satan said, no, I don't even ask you for everything. Just give me a fraction. And when you give that fraction, whether your mouth for backbiting, assassinating other people's character, or you even give Satan your eyes for lustfulness, or you give Satan your, your, your ears to listen to tales, you have itching ear, and you call yourself a believer. You know, when you give that little part to Satan, then Satan knows one thing for sure, that as, as soon as you give that little to him, God is going to reject, of what, what, uh, reject the rest of whatever you think you are because you are not yet complete. Don't forget, perfect submission, perfect delight. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 20 to 22 may be able to teach you a little bit of lesson out there. Therefore, if God was able to find a man that will live a holy life and die spotless, if any man will then believe in him, he will be forgiven. And Satan continued to say, Such a person will be free from our power, and after he must have saved all mankind with his blood, our government will collapse. Then I throw another question to Satan. What is the name of that particular son that God said will bruise the head of your government? And in what way did the son came to this world that made you to know he is the promised one? Then Satan replied, it is the name you have been calling since we started the discussion, and I told you to call him that righteous man. Then I answered unconsciously. I never did know when I said that, but I answered. I said, is it Jesus? Then Satan shouted again, ah, oh, 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 nuisance, bag of wickedness. Do you want to drive me away? I have told you not to mention that name again, because it was serious than an arrow to me, even more serious than fire. Never you mention that name again. Then I responded, Captain, from the way you talk, I'm sorry, but I just want to know 
that righteous man you are talking about, it seems like it's more than you. You have, uh, you have not said anything about him at all. I mean, I just want to know something. What's going on? How come you don't want to hear his name or something? Why is his name so dangerous? Then Satan responded, I will have told you much more, but you are the one asking numerous questions. Then I said, okay, forget about all these questions that uh, I might have asked and tell me something about the seniority of that righteous man. Then Satan went into this kind of a long story to tell me, which I, I will try to familiarize you with as much as I can. Uh, the day is long now, but I can still remember very vividly as if it happened yesterday. Okay? Then Satan said to me, Aha! You want to hear the truth? Then I will tell you now. To God whom supreme glory ever be, I swear in the name of the living God that I will never hide anything from you. Ever before the promised child was born, there were many prophecies about his birth, even up till the day he was born. However, God Almighty hid the mystery from human beings. The mystery being that God Almighty himself came to this world to redeem human soul that had died in trespasses. He came because of the sin of man and that he might die the death of the cross so that the power of sin might be destroyed forever because uh, m many righteous people has come into this world to do that kind of a thing but we, we have, have our own share from the lives of those individuals and so no human being can do it but God himself. Therefore, the name of that righteous man which I told you not to mention is the very name of the living God which he bears. For this reason, nobody among us can withstand that name as the universe was made by that name the most important aspect of it is that he died and arose from the dead on the third day and he ascended into heaven with flesh which nobody has ever done during his spell in this world he made all efforts to bruise his uh, i mean we, we made all efforts to bruise his heels that is to make him sin so that both heaven and earth will be all corrupted all over. But he insisted, and he instead bruised our head. He insisted on righteousness. So instead of, instead of us uh, 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 breaking or uh, bruising his heels, he bruises our head, even though we labeled two charges against him by which we wanted to trap him. The first label, the first charges was that we quoted to him that the Bible says, even though hands are joined together, sinners will not go free without punishment. That was Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. But that righteous man re uh, replied to this saying, Whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. That is John chapter 6, verse 37. Okay? This is the reason why that righteous man was tempted on the cross where two thieves were nailed together with him, one at the right hand and the other at the left. I, Satan, entered into the heart of the, of the thief on the left hand side and then the heart of the thief on the right hand side in order to tempt that righteous man. My aim was to see if by operating through them that that righteous man G he's now talking of Jesus Christ, okay, would act contrary to the word of God or to his own word. I started the conversation through the thief on the left. Speaking through his mouth, I said, if you are the son of God, save yourself and save us too. He said nothing. He did not respond. Immediately, after I did that, Satan was talking, okay? Don't forget what we're saying. Satan is talking now. Immediately after I did that uh, in the heart of the thief on the left, I entered into the thief on the right hand side and said, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? 
and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done no wrong. Then I further added, speaking on behalf of the thief on the right, remember me when you come into your father's kingdom. After saying this, I quickly ran away from the heart of that thief and stood by the, by, by the, uh, by, by the side to hear what the reply of that righteous man would be. To my astonishment, he bruised my head by saying to the thief, not to me, he, he wasn't talking to me. Now, listen to this, uh, brethren. Satan was saying that Jesus was not talking to Satan. Jesus was talking to the man that was hung on the right hand side on the cross. Jesus said, today shall thou be with me in paradise. That was a most sorrowful day for the kingdom of darkness, according to what Satan told me that day. He said that was the most sorrowful day. Now, like he told me, as I can remember, Satan said there had never been such a day in the history of the evil forces after that. Then after, the, after all these things happened, that righteous man gave up the ghost. Our government divided. That's what Satan says. He said their government divided and were scattered everywhere until the body of that righteous man was removed from the cross and was buried. Ever since, I have not been able to control the damage. That's what Satan said. Satan said, ever since that time, he has not been able to control the damage. And he continued to say, that righteous man did not go to the grave because of the living human beings, but he went to the grave so that the dead might have the privilege of hearing the gospel. And that corresponds with 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 20. Okay? Then Satan continued to tell me that immediately Jesus entered the grave, Satan and his followers and his angels, they remember another of Jesus' sayings before he died. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Satan and his colleagues now reasoned that since the word of God says, there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. That is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. So after the burial of that righteous man, the evil spirit stood around his grave. They determined not to allow him to resurrect from the dead, according to what Satan told me. And even if he wanted to come out of the grave, they have decided to beat him mercilessly, since he was still in, in the flesh of human beings. So they decided to beat him mercilessly, and so they therefore seized the wind from every corner of the universe that it must not blow. They, they thought he was going to pass through the wind. But to their surprise, according to what Satan told me, when it was 11.55 p.m. on that great Saturday dash Sunday dawn, Satan said they saw the angels of God coming down from heaven. They were singing, using many types of musical instruments in their hands. If you read uh, Matthew chapter 28, around verse 2 to 4, somewhere there, you will see that even those who went to the grave also to look at Jesus, they, they met angels right there, okay? Now, there is no point of argument here. Just let me finish with the, uh, uh, with the conversation. Then we learn what the Lord will have us to learn there. Then I, I, quick, I, I interrupted him and I said, what type of songs were the angels singing? Then he, he said, they sang three different kind of songs. But the first one, uh, the wedding says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Let the king of glory come in. He who had redeemed the world with his blood, he is to take the kingdom. Which in uh, the song was sung in Yoruba language, according to, uh, because we were discussing in Yoruba language, 
And the song was it says, Ego ring is okay, and no one call you a go wale and ito and ito for Jared a ye pada umbola tiwa jaba ke ozana 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 e yoru. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hawata, Hawata, ye ye. Oru oshu pa e wole kabi ye si yaba wa. That is the chorus said, Hosanna, Hosanna, ye heavens, hallelujah, ye the earth, the sun and the moon bow down, honor be for our king. As we saw them singing, Satan continued to say that, we were annoyed and said in anger, if you angels of God venture to come here, we shall fight you to finish. Then when we said this, they started another song as follows. The song was still in Yoruba language, but I will interpret it. Oh, John La Lodja, Oni Ye, Kabi Yesi Le, Fobake Rubu, Bobo, Eda, Jade, Wa, Kabi Yesi Le, Fobake Rubu, Ogo, Aru, Lo, Ho, Ye, Kabi Yesi Le, Fobake Rubu, Ogo, Aru, Tibori, Kabi Yesi Le, Fobake Rubu, Emi Yesu E Parada, Kabi Yesi Le, Fobake Rubu, Aje Usho Komariwa, Kabi Yesi Le, Fobake Rubu, Ota Olo Dumare, Kabi yesi le fo ba ke rubu. Ogu jesu ti bori won. Kabi yesi le fo ba ke rubu. And so on and so forth. The song says, today is a great day for us. Honor be the king of the cherubim. All creatures, ye all come out. Honor be the king of the cherubim. Great is he now in the war front. Honor be the king of the cherubim. Demon's spirit be now trembled. Honored be the king of the cherubim. Witch and wizard must not see us. Honored be the king of the cherubim. And so on and so on and so on. Then Satan go further to say that as the angels of God were singing that song, they were all at a lot to overcome any power that was contrary to their own. And as they stood, as the forces of darkness stood at, at a lot, they noticed that so suddenly the angels of God were not using their instruments anymore. And they had stopped singing. So there was silence everywhere. And when it was about 11.58 p.m., they started to sing a third song without their instruments. And as they sang, Satan said it was like, Everyone there were as dead. And the song they were singing was Toluani le ate kunre, haye ate kunure. They were singing Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And Satan said, as they were singing this song, the demons around, all those forces of darkness, including Satan himself inclusive, were made powerless and more or less dead. And one of the angels of God came to them and he laid a hand on their heads. That is, laid a hand on the heads of all those forces. And as many as they were, he made them to bow their heads down by force. He then said, ye bad things. Before, the, before Satan and his colleagues would raise up their heads, what they saw was surprising. That righteous man had risen from the dead. There was a great pandemonium, and Satan and his people were panic-stricken. Immediately, they hear the angels of God singing again. Their last song was as follows. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The strife is over, the battle is done. Now is the Savior's triumph won. Oh, let the song of praise be sung. Hallelujah. So that righteous man rose from the dead. His resurrection was a grief to the kingdom of darkness because it was by this that he gave his people, Christians, the liberty and the authority over the forces of Satan. Satan told me this. He told me. And he said, from that time, God the Father put an authority which no man can face in that righteous name. Woo! How sweet is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Glory! Then I ask another question. What is the difference between you and that man? And why do you call him righteous? I have not yet understand. Then Satan said, the difference is that he is my creator. And whatever he says he will do, he will surely do it. His word is never changed. Then I ask another question. His followers and your followers, who will enjoy better things best? And he said, why are you asking such a question? I told him, I want to know. That is why I'm asking you. Then he said something to me that was so funny. And he said, mind yourself, for if one is crying, it does not mean that he could not see. I have not, know, I, I have not known what you want to do, you see, but uh, that righteous man, you know, whosoever is doing his will on earth will enjoy small betterment, small, and at times none at all. Such a person will see poverty and various tribulations and problems. But at last, in the government of that righteous man, the man will be with him forever. But whosoever is doing our will in this world, we will give him or her everything he or she will want. Don't even talk of needs. Be it money, fame, or anything. He or she will be rich like wealth. He or she will not suffer anything in this world and will even have more than required. At the last, I and that person will go to my kingdom where I will make such a person an ambassador. So, my friend, you have heard this dialogue between Satan and I and uh, Jesus Christ is Lord and even Satan knows this. Then have you taken Jesus as the Lord and King of your life? Do accept him now, just as you are. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of your salvation. You know, many believers, or many people, let me say, many people, they believe in Ouija board, contacting departed souls to find favor. You soon, I'm sure you will soon pass to one eternity, and that favor you are looking for will be of no use. You may laugh now, you may joke, or you may even call me a liar if you wish. But I'm sure a preacher will definitely preach to you one day, and you will never have the nerve of calling him a liar. Who is that preacher? Mr. Death. Mr. Death is the greatest preacher that has ever lived on the face of, of the earth. Anywhere he preaches his message, people always shed tears. You see people dying every day. Where do you think they go? Where do you think they are going to? So, the, the decision is yours. And if you are a Christian, this is the time to begin to mean business with God. Stop game playing. Stop playing games. Deny yourself. Carry the cross and follow the Lord. And it will be well with your soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with...